Welcome to the first in a series, or maybe just one video, I have no idea what's going to happen with all this stuff, uh, calculating the digits of pi. So for pi day today, at least with the silly American way of putting the date together, March 14th, 314, um, if only it was the year 1592, um, it would really be pi day. Um, I and like to do coding challenges around calculating the digits of pi or approximating pi, although if I want to approximate pi, I should really do that on July 22nd because that's 22 slash seven or 22. Anyway, the point is uh, I released a video this morning about counting the digits of pi through a block collisions, and that's one you could watch. I'll link to that in the description. Um, but there are three other methods I want to explore, um, and I might do them all in this video, more likely just one of them in this video. Uh, there's the Leibniz method. There's this uh, way of uh, looking at uh, random numbers and co-primes, which is a method that Matt Parker used in this, his uh, co uh, YouTube channel, Stand Up Maths, to calculate pi. And then there's also this amazing thing that happens in the Mandelbrot set, the Mandelbrot fractal, which I have a coding challenge about, where you can actually find the digits of pi, the number pi, uh, in a very strange place. There's a, wonderful, there's a wonderful number file video with mathematician Holly Krieger, who explains this in great detail, and we can see if we can sort of write a code example to do that, since I already have a Mandelbrot set code. All right, let's start with the Leibniz method. And let's use the P5 web editor. Let's try to think of a way of making this inter interesting. So first of all, the Leibniz formula is, states that if we start with the number one and then alternating fractions where the denominator is the next odd number, subtracting first, adding next, subtracting next, adding next, if this infinite series will converge to pi divided by four. Wow. That's crazy. Let's see if that works. So this shouldn't be too hard to code, at least in terms of things that I've coded before. Um, let's just start with, let's just do all this in setup first, and then we'll think about if there's an interesting way to animate it. So let's start with, uh, I'm just going to make a variable called pi, which is, I'm going to start at 1, because I need to sum up the values. Then I need to do some number of iterations. So we'll start with 0. Let's just try doing 10 iterations to start. It's just 10 iterations to start. Now I need to get that alternating sequence of odd numbers. So that should be easy. Like if I, that's the denominator of the fraction. So let's call that denominator. It's really just uh, what? I, um, I times 2, sorry, I times 2 plus 3, right? Because we're starting at 3, then 5, then 7, then 9. So 0 times 2 is 0 plus 3, that's 3. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 3 is 5. You can see how this works. And then um, what I want to do, the, uh, I don't know, the fraction is 1 divided by that denominator. And then I need to say pi plus equals uh, that fraction. I could just, this, that's silly. I'll just say pi plus equals, oh, wait, 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 wait. First to subtract, then add. So I need to say if I modulus uh, 2 equals 0, right? Because that's how I can detect whether I'm, I'm alternating even or odd numbers. I mean, they're all odd numbers, but am I, am I the first one or the second one? So the, or the third one or the fourth one, etc. So I would say in that case, um, pi minus equals 1 divided by that denominator. Ah, don't. Um, and then otherwise, and of course I could write this in uh, you could probably find a clever way to write this in just a few lines of in, in many fewer lines of code, plus equals. And then let's just say create a div for to create a div um, with that uh, digit. And we can see there it is. Okay, well, now that is not the number pi. Nowhere close to the number pi. Why? Well, if you remember from the Leibniz series, this series converges on pi divided by 4. So I could put 4 minus 4 divided by 3 plus 4 divided by 5. I could put 4 in there. Or I could just at the very end say pi plus uh, pi times equal 4. And so let's say um, uh, no, oh, let's, do, let's add no, oh, I might graph it. So let's leave the canvas there. Um, and let's do this again. And there we go, 3.23. That's not so great. First, let's make that number bigger. So we can see there we go. We have got this number. Now, we only did 10 iterations. That's very few. By the way, if we just do 1, 2.6, 2, 3.4, 3, 2.8, you can see it's bouncing up and down, which, so this might be interesting to graph. But let's do 400, 3.144, 4,000, 
40,000, you can see that we're getting closer and closer to the digits of pi. Let's try graphing it. Let's go and put in draw. And let's, I'm actually gonna take out the idea of this loop. Um, I'm gonna have this idea of pi be a global variable. And I'm gonna do this calculation every time through draw. So this is really, um, we could think of this as an iteration. Iterations equals zero. So the denominator is iterations. If iterations modulus two equals zero, and then I will manually increase the iterations every time through draw. And I'm going to make a variable called div. And I'm gonna say div equals create pi div. And then I'm gonna say div, I'm gonna update it with pi. So now we can see, oh, yeah, something is, I, I'm not sure if this is working. Oh, whoa, 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 oh, this times equal four is a problem. So in this case, it might make more sense for me to just start pi at four. I mean, I could do a number of different things. I could start pi at four and I could put four in here. And then I don't need to do this because I, I don't, this, now that pi is a global variable, I, don't, I can't multiply by four every time through draw. So this should get me Converging, yes. So you can see I'm converging in theory on the number pi. So you can see 3.1 has settled. Eventually this four should settle as I get to a certain number of iterations. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's graph this. So I'm going to uh, uh, make a, an array called like history. So what I wanna do is say um, history.push pi. And I'm going to say four, let i equal zero, i is less than history.length, i plus plus. And what I want to do is I want to draw a, a line. I'm going to say begin shape, end shape. And I also want to calculate sort of the spacing. The spacing is going to be the history divided by, um, oh no, sorry, the width of the window divided by history.length. And then um, x will be i times that spacing. This should really be spacing. I'll call it spacing. I want to figure out how many things to go across the window do I have. And then I'm going to say vertex x comma uh, some y. So let me just make y right now height divided by 2 just to see that this works. Did I stop it? And I'm going to need to say uh, stroke. 255, no fill. Right, I see a line going across. But height divided by two, which is the y, should be history index i. Um, and let me map that value. Whoops, map that value between some range, uh, between like negative, between, sorry, two and four, to between uh, zero and height. So I want the, I mean, actually, let me see. No, no, no. So, sorry, sorry, this is not making any sense. What am I doing here? I forgot to put the Y here. <laughs> I forgot to put the Y here, and I forgot to put the Y here. There we go, that's what I was looking to see. We are now seeing it converge. This is what I meant to see. <laughs> so in theory, where is pi? Let's draw a line. Uh, I could be more thoughtful about uh, what my range is that I'm looking for, but let's, let's put a line um, also. We're going to say here line, which is going to have uh, x0, I'm going to say pi y equals, we'll use the same mapping, but we'll actually map the value of pi. Uh, so we're going to have a line go across the window. Um, and this should say let, oh, my brain has stopped working. So this is where pi is, and now we can see the Leibniz series graphically approximating and get it converging in on the number pi. All right, now, uh, and I probably, I should really invert this. Like, because, I, because right now, the lower number starts up top, so I should really put 
map it from height down to zero. Let's make the frame rate fast again. And there we go. Oh boy. And then uh, this is a height, height down to zero. And here we go. There is, we now have the Leibniz series, infinite series, converging on the number pi. But in a very inaccurate way, because we're just using floating point numbers, which only gives us, I don't know how many decimal places, like seven at the most. Um, you know, what does is, what is, uh, P5 actually think pi is? I could say console.log pi. Uh, well, I get more than seven, but I get this many decimal places. So could we possibly do this in a more accurate way is the question. Thanks for watching this coding challenge approximating the number pi with the Leibniz method. Um, I think there's some things you could probably do. First of all, this should really be, these should be variables like uh, min y, uh, max y, um, because I'm using them in two places, min y, min y, max y. Then um, they, I could just uh, initialize them with something like min y equals two and max y equals four, and this should be exactly the same thing. But the point is that minimum and maximum could be adaptive. So for example, you could do something like actually start to delete old, uh, like adapt the range that you're graphing based on uh, based on where you are in the approximation series. I don't know, that might, I, that mean, in other words, what are some other ways that you could animate this or visualize it in perhaps a more interesting way? There must be some sort of like spiraling convergence that you could do. But also the Leibniz series, the Leibniz formula I picked because of its simplicity um, was uh, relatively easy to implement, but there are, there are many other series for approximating pi. For example, there's the Euler uh, convergence. Um, you could look at that. There's these uh, more recent ones uh, the, that are quite famous and sort of insane looking. I really should come back and do a video trying with these, although I probably would need a big integer, a big decimal um, a data structure to store the numbers larger than the sort of standard integer or floating point precision will allow me to do in JavaScript. Um, so that's something you could also do. How could you really, with a really large number of iterations and more precision in JavaScript, I'll put a link in the description to the big rational uh, JavaScript library, which allows you to store a number with great, many more decimal places than what you just get for free with floating point numbers. So you could try that. So try one of these other formulas, uh, try animating it in a different way, share your community contribution at the Coding Train website with the page associated with this challenge, and thank you for watching this video about approximating the number pi with the Leibniz method. Goodbye.